This video is concerned with the partial wrap to pay fund duplication. To pay fund duplication is a 270 degree wrap and you see here the hiatal hernia, the hiatal defect and part of the stomach herniating into the chest. Because the patient is relatively thin, you see the vega clearly. These are the branches of the vagus going to the liver and going along the lesser curvature to form the crow's foot. You see also in this picture the parts lesser and now you see the parts condenser and the body through projecting through the parts lesser and you see the hepatic branch of the veins. For the details of the port arrangement and the patient positioning, you can go to the Nissen fund duplication video where it is explained in details. Why we chose to do a uh, 2P fund duplication instead of a Nissen fund duplication is that the patient has an almost aperistaltic esophagus. He has severe reflux, hiatal hernia, as you have seen, and also he has an almost aperistaltic esophagus, very weak peristaltic. So, this is why we resorted to a partial 270 degree wrap instead of a 360 degree wrap, a complete wrap which might cause the patient dysphagia. We are opening now the parts of placida and then going to the phrenoesophageal membrane, dissecting it carefully as not to injure the big eye or the esophagus. Here you see the upper part of the left crust starting to show. The right crust is in front of us right here and very obvious. We start by opening peritoneum just above the right crust and be very careful not to deglove the right cross from its peritoneum as we have said, as we have said before. The posterior vagus is now into view very clearly and you have to preserve it and not to injure it inadvertently. Now we have developed the left cross lower down. So now we have delineated the left cross in the, its upper part and it's in lo its lower part. And now we are dissecting the esophagus posteriorly from the left cross to which it is intimately related to pass behind to create a tunnel and put a tape to pull on the gastrosophageal junction for the remaining part of the surgery. Again, the posterior vagus is now evident and we must preserve it at all times. We continue dissecting the phrenoesophageal membrane carefully not to injure the vagus or the muscles of the crew. Now we direct our attention to start dissecting the esophagus in its intrathoracic part, in its mediastinal part. And gradually, as we mobilize the esophagus, we dissect it away from both crura 
and the periosophageal tissue to gain esophageal lengthening which is a very important aim we need at least two or three centimeters of a relaxed non-tense intra-abdominal esophagus this is very important for the success of the surgery so we gradually dissect all the periosophageal attachments so as to gain length in the intra-abdominal esophagus in this part you should be very careful as the anterior radius lies right there it is between the esophagus, esophagus and the upper part of the left crust of the diaphragm it is always hidden and always stuck to the upper part of the left crust you must be very careful so it is very easily injured in this part now we can pass the tape and pull on the tape so as to continue our mediastinal osophageal dissection The assistant now coming from the left subcostal port is the one who is pulling on the esophagus in different directions as the dissection is carried out. All attachments of the esophagus up to the level of the inferior pulmonary vein in the chest will be taken down to mobilize the esophagus very very nicely into the abdomen this is a key point in this surgery a reminder of where the anterior vagus is and that we must preserve it Sending thoracic aorta is clearly evident posteriorly as we continue our dissection in all directions around the esophagus to gain the intra-abdominal length. And you see now that the esophagus is coming gradually and descends without tension into the abdominal cavity.
esophagus now is dissected away from the pericardium and very soon we will be at the level of the inferior pulmonary veins and this will constitute the upper limit of our mediastinal dissection. This is the level of the inferior pulmonary vein and this is the end of our mediastinal dissection. Now you can appreciate the extra length added to the intra-abdominal esophagus which is left without traction and we have like 4 or 5 cm very nicely esophagus intra-abdominal which is not going back into the chest. So now we can proceed to take down short gastrics and form the wrap. All posterior attachments must be taken down. The retrogastric tunnel must be completely free to accommodate the wrap 
so as not to cause dysphagia postoperatively. And because this patient is very thin, should be very careful as the splenic artery usually lies closer than what you think. And you can injure it if you're not careful enough. Now that we have completed the mobilization of the wrap and the posterior petrogastric tunnel, we start closure of the crawl. The first stitch must be very careful as it is the closest to the thoracic aorta and it must be placed with great care. As in the video of the Nissen fan duplication, we always use this technique in order to ensure a very tight approximation of both crusts so as the knot doesn't come loose. This is our preferred technique and we use it always in the crawler repair. Be careful of the back of the needle as you are careful with the tip of the needle. The back of the needle can injure the esophagus or other important structures.
Because this patient has very weak peristalsis, we did not put any more cruel stitches so as not to tighten the remaining hiatus around the weak esophagus. Now we pass the rep posteriorly and see exactly where the rep is going to lie around the esophagus. One very important difference between the toupee and the fundal, missing fundal application is that in the toupee we fix the posterior aspect of the rep to the crawl. It's is one very important difference between toupee and missing fundal application. We must fix in the toupee the rep posteriorly to the crawl. Now the assistant will fix the wrap after we have positioned the wrap in its anatomical way around the lower end of the esophagus and I will fix the wrap posteriorly to the cross. Now, as the wrap has been fixed posteriorly, the assistant now must take the tape and the astrosophageal junction and fix it inferiorly so as we suture the wrap to the lower end of the esophagus properly, not to the stomach. This is a very important step 
in either Nissan fund application or to pay that the assistant takes the tape which is on the gastroesophageal junction inferiorly with tension so as to put the rat in the lower end of the esophagus proper. We start by fixing the esophagus to the rat on either side leaving the anterior part of the esophagus bare without wrap around it, just a 270 degree wrap. The differences between the Nissen fun duplication and the toupee is one, the fixation of the rep posterior to the crust, two, it's a 270 degree rep, not a 360 degree rep. The third and very important difference is that the rep and the toupee must be at least double the length of the wrap of the Nissen fund duplication. In the Nissen fund duplication we aim to do a short floppy Nissen, but in the toupee the wrap must be at least 4 cm long compared to the 2 cm wrap of the Nissen fund duplication. We must be very careful in this stitch not to incorporate the tape as we go closer to the gastroesophageal junction. The same is repeated now on the left side of the wrap to fix the edge of the stomach to the side of the esophageal wall.
Now the rack has been completed on either side, leaving the anterior part of the superior wall free. 270 degree rack, and you see it lies very nicely anatomically on either side of the esophagus. It's not too tight, it is well fixed posteriorly. The crust and the floor repair is quite good and you have a very good length of intra-abdominal esophagus that has been restored. Now you take down the tape, cut it and remove it and do not place any more.